So we are looking at the floor plan. This is part two. In the previous recording, I had said to focus on getting the walls in place first. And once you have the walls, then it's a matter of getting the openings in there. Once you have the openings, then go ahead and place the fixtures and all the other information. What I'd like to do at this point is take a look at my drawing and then take a look at the dimensioned plan and see where I should go next. What I'd like to do is draw in the closets and put in the rod and shelf and put in the bifold doors. Let me begin there. I'm looking at the bedroom on the left-hand side and I'm looking at the dimensions there, six feet, five inches. The interior dimension of that closet is two foot deep and it's a five inch wall. So let me go ahead and draw that in. So I'll go to my drawing and I'm going to zoom into the area where I need to focus, which is right here. Based on the dimensions, I'm going to offset six feet, five inches first. So I'm going to type O and enter. Distance is going to be six feet, five inches. So I type six feet, five and enter. I'm going to select this object and I'm going to offset it down. So I'm going to click right here. Now, before I exit the offset command, I know that the wall thickness is five inches. So now I'm going to take this line, click on it, place my cursor up above, and I'm going to type in five and enter. And that offsets the line five inches. And now I enter to terminate the command. Okay, from here, I go back and I look at the example and I need two feet inside that closet and then a five inch wall. So I go back to my drawing, I go ahead and enter. And when I enter, it is going to repeat the last command that I used. And the last command was offset. So by entering, offset is repeated. The distance I'd like to offset is two feet. So I type it in this way, or I can type it in this way. 24 inches is the same thing as two feet. I have the distance in there. I enter. I select the object, which is this one. Click on it, offset it over to the left. So I click, and then I'm going to select that line here, and I'm going to offset it five inches in this direction. And now that I have the lines that I need, I will go ahead and enter to terminate the command. And from here, just taking a look at it, I can see that it looks like using the fill command should work just fine. So I type F and enter. I take a look and the radius is zero. That's what I want. So I select my first object and then I select my second object. I'm taken right out of that fillet command. I forgot to use multiple and that's okay. I'm going to enter and that will repeat the fillet command. And then I can go ahead and select the first object and the second object. I'm going to trim. So I type TR and enter. And I'm going to trim this segment here and then this segment. And then I enter. Going back to my example, that is going to be a four foot wide opening. And it's going to be centered on the outside wall. I'm going to draw a line. So I type L, enter. And I'd like it to go from this midpoint across, and I'm going to track it from this midpoint down. Notice how it tracks. Let me zoom in and do that again for you. If I place my cursor here, it wants to snap to that midpoint, but I'm going to hover over the midpoint and just come straight down. And now I can click. 
and then I can right click and enter. For some of you, let me undo this for a second. You might have the line here, you start drawing it, and you might have perpendicular turned on as a running O snap. And if that's the case, if I do a shift right click and I go perpendicular, then I'm able to do that without using the object tracking. I'll go ahead and enter to terminate the command. Zoom out, pan a little bit, and now I will offset. I'll type O and enter. The distance is going to be two feet. And I'd like to offset this line up and the same line now down. And then I enter. I'm going to select this line and then tap the delete key because I do not need it anymore. Now I trim. So I type TR. Enter, and I'll select these two segments. Right-click, Enter to terminate that command. Now I'm going to zoom out. And looking at my example, I have a closet on the other bedroom, and it's the same layout. And as I look at it, I can use the mirror command to achieve the same results. And I'm going to get a little sophisticated here. Watch what I'm going to do. I'd like to mirror this layout for the closet over onto the other side. I cannot pick the midpoint of this line because I have a five inch wall to my left and an eight inch wall to my right. But I can still use the mirror command and watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to type MI, that's the command alias for mirror, and I enter. To select the objects, I'm going to use an implied crossing window. Implied crossing goes from right to left. So as long as I'm picking, right to left, I'll be okay. So I'm going to click right here, take it over, and it's crossing through the lines that I want to select. So I'll go ahead and click. I do not want to select any more objects, so I enter. And now for the first point of the mirror line, I want to pick a midpoint. But here's what I do. I hold down the shift key and then right click. And I select this option. And I'd like the midpoint between two points. I pick it. The first point is this end point here. I click on it. The second point is this end point here and I click. That gives me the exact middle or midpoint between those two lines. And now I simply click down here, make sure polar or ortho is turned on so you can get a perfectly straight mirror line. Go ahead and click. And I click no to erase source objects and I'm done. I'll zoom in right here, and then I will trim the line segments. And then enter to terminate the command. So I have my openings, and I'm ready to place the bifold doors, and I'll do that in a little bit. Now, before I continue, I gave you as a resource, a bathroom layout. The reason for me giving you that drawing file is to show you how you can use an existing drawing to help you complete another one. And also to show you how we use blocks and W blocks to help us achieve our goals here. What I'm going to do now 
is pause, and I'm going to bring in that drawing file. To do that, I need to insert it. So I'm going to come over here to insert, and I'd like to insert blocks from libraries. And then I'm going to come over here and click on the icon so that I can display a file navigation dialog box. I will look for that bathroom plan that I provided and then click open. It's going to take a moment to load. Sometimes I like to click in here to see if it does anything. Sometimes you can click on current drawing and then come back to your library. It does take a moment. There we go. So it's loaded. And what I'd like to do is select this file right here. This is the DWG. And I'm going to bring in this drawing file into my current drawing file. When I do that, I'm going to make it a block inside of this floor plan drawing file. So I'm going to click it one time. So one click, bring your cursor over, zoom out, pan, and place it somewhere near that bathroom layout. So go ahead and give it a click. And now if I hover over it, you'll see that it is behaving like one single object and it tells me it is a block reference and that's exactly what I want. But I need to look at my example and I need to see that layout and make sure that I modify the block so that I achieve this result that I see. So from here, it looks like I need to rotate it. So I'll go ahead and go back to the Home tab, Modify Panel, Rotate. I'll select the object, which is this block. I will enter. I will pick a point right here as the base point. And then I'm going to rotate it down like this, making sure that I do not click on any object so it doesn't snap to anything. So I'll click. And I have what I want. But you'll notice that the walls are just a little different. So I think it's going to be easier for me to explode this block and start to bring the pieces over. To explode the block, I simply type X and Enter. And I select the object, which is this block. I click on it and then I enter. And now instead of behaving as one single object, now I've broken it down to its individual parts and pieces. And you could see that there are blocks nested in here. Well, they're no longer nested, they're now part of the drawing. So now what I'll do is I'll zoom in just a little bit more, pan down, I will check the dimensions to see if they match up. So I'll go over here to my utilities panel. I'll click on measure and I'll do a distance check. And I'll go from this endpoint to that endpoint. And I have eight feet. I'll go ahead and enter. And then I'll come down here and measure that distance from here to there. And I also have eight feet, which is great. I'll enter. I'm going to measure the distance from the top of this endpoint to that endpoint. And I have nine feet. I'll enter and then I'll measure the distance from here down to there. And I have eight feet 11. For this drawing, it's okay to use the dimensions of that bathroom. So let me tap the escape key a couple of times to get out of everything I was in. 
What I'm going to do now is use a crossing window, an implied crossing window to select these two lines, tap the delete key on my keyboard to erase them. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to be very, very careful. Begin to bring in some objects or rather move the objects over. Or in my case, I'm actually going to be copying only because if I make any mistakes, I want to be able to see where I was copying the information from. I'm going to begin with this window up here first. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to select copy and I'll select the window and the wall segments there on either side. I will go ahead and enter. And I want to copy them from this endpoint straight down to this endpoint. And if I need to, I can turn off ortho just to make sure. There we go. And then right click and enter to terminate that command. Now I'm going to zoom in here for just a moment because I'm going to turn off by clicking on this icon. I'm going to turn off this layer that represents the plan information, my doors, my windows, and fixtures. And I turn that layer off and I can see that there's still the line going through for the wall, but I don't want that anymore. Now that I have turned off that layer, I will enter. I will now type TR for trim and enter. And I'm going to use a fence to trim the two lines. Done. And then I enter. And then I come back over here to my layers panel. I click on the drop down and I click on this icon to return me to the previous state that I was in, which had that layer turned on. So that's all set. And now I will continue. And if it's easier, if you wanted to, because they're kind of far away from each other, if you wanted to, you can move the objects just a little bit closer like this. There we go. So now what I'd like to do is copy a lot more information over. I wanna copy the toilet and I wanna copy the sinks and the countertop. And I should also copy the walls, maybe the door here. So here's what I'm going to do. I will go ahead and type C, O and enter for copy. And I'm going to use an implied crossing window like this from here over here. These are the objects that I wish to bring over. I'm going to zoom out and just make sure I don't need the walls because they're already walls here, but I do need this wall and that door. That's the information I want. I will go ahead and enter. And now for my base point, I will pick this endpoint and bring it down to this endpoint and click. I will now right click and enter to terminate the command. And I have made a copy of that layout. And now that I have that, I can go ahead and take all of this and just window that, and then tap the delete key. And now it's just a matter of cleaning up some of these line conditions. I'll come over here. And it looks like I need to fill it this corner. So I'll type F and enter. The radius is zero. I'm going to do it up here as well. So I better type M for multiple and then enter. And I'll fill it this corner and this one. Coming over to the other side, I can fill it this corner and this one. Right click and enter. And then coming over here, I will type TR and enter to trim this segment. And now I can enter to terminate that command, zoom out. Oh, by the way, I can 
close the blocks palette. And then I'm going to take a look at this door because in the example, that door is swinging in. And it's also opening to the left. If I select the door, you'll notice this is what is called a dynamic block. All I have to do is click on the arrow here to flip it, and then click on this arrow to flip it. It's different than a typical block. This one has some dynamic features. And in this case, it allows me to flip it. And I can come over here. First of all, let me tap the escape key. That allows me to flip it. And then over here, this block of this toilet, if I select it, you'll see that it has a grip point here. This one says it will align the block to an object. So watch this. If I pick it and I hover over here, notice how it aligns to the wall. And that's nice. That's something that we can go over at a later date. So I have my bathroom in place. Now it looks like I'm ready to bring in some of the other objects that I've drawn. And if I look at the example, I'm ready to bring in the bifold doors. And I'm going to make a block out of them first. So here's where I go back to open and I look for my doors and I will open them. I have not made blocks out of them yet. So let me do that right now. And you'll notice these objects reside on layer zero. When you make blocks, make sure that they are on layer zero. I'll start with the bifold doors here. So I'm going to type B and enter. The name for the bifold is going to be this. I will pick the insertion base point. I'll click here and I'll pick this endpoint. I'm going to select the objects. I'll click here and select the bifold doors. I can right click and that takes me back to my block definition window. I do want to convert them to a block. For the behavior, I want to make sure that I scale uniformly and allow exploding. I don't want to change anything else right now. I'm not going to put a description, but you're more than welcome to. And I will now click OK. And now if I hover over one of the lines, you'll notice how it highlights both of these bifold doors, and it tells me it's a block reference. So I'm all set. I'll continue with this door. I'll make a block out of that. I'll type B and enter, and I will name it. For the insertion base point, it's already at X and Y equals zero. So I'm going to leave that as the base point. I'm going to select the objects. So I'll window all of the objects here and then enter. And that's all I have to do for now. I can go ahead and click OK. And I have made that into a block. How do I know? I hover over it, pause, and it tells me it's a block reference. And I will continue one more door here. For this one, let's see, I'll type B and enter. I will name it. I'll specify the base point. I'll click here to pick a point. And I'll select this lower left-hand corner. I'm going to select my objects. 
and I will window them like this. Right click, takes us back to the block definition window. I don't need to change anything in the behavior. My settings are fine, description is optional, and I'll go ahead and click OK. I have made my blocks. And what I'll do is I'll come over here to insert and I'll click down on the insert and I can see that I have my three blocks as part of this drawing file. And as a reminder, my definition for a block is a drawing within a drawing file. So let me click off of that. I'll go over here and save my drawing. And I will close it. And now I'm going to bring that drawing file in here. The drawing file contains the blocks. I'll click on insert the drop down. I will go to blocks from libraries. I will click on the icon to show me the folder so I can select my block library. I will select my doors and click open. And let me also hover back over here so that I can see it loading. Wait for a bit here while it loads the information. And don't be alarmed if it takes a little bit longer than you think it should. There we go. So I've loaded the doors drawing file. I don't need to bring in the entire drawing. All I want to do is bring in the individual blocks from that drawing. I'm going to click on the bifold door first. I'll give it one click and then bring it in. And I'll simply place them here for now. And if I look at them, I see that they are red. So that lets me know that they are on the walls layer. What I can do is I can go back to the Home tab. I can select the object, the block, and then click on my layers and place it on the appropriate layer. Now, because I made the block on layer zero, it will take on the color properties on whatever layer I put it on. It's working just fine. And now it's a matter of moving it into place. Now I'm going to take advantage of that grip point. I'm going to pick it from that grip point like this. And I'm going to move it over here to this endpoint. And now I'm going to pick it again from that grip point. And I'm going to right click and select rotate. I'm going to make sure that I rotate it straight down. I'll turn ortho on. And then I'll go ahead and click. And then tap the escape key to remove the grips. I could mirror them, but it's not necessary. What I'll do is simply copy them over. And I could use the grips, which I've been using before, but let me go ahead and just simply type CO for copy and enter. I'd like to copy this block, enter. And I'd like to copy it from this endpoint. If I need to, I zoom in and I pick it. And I'd like to copy it over to this endpoint. Tap the escape key. And now, if I wanted to, I can mirror it. So I'll go ahead and type MI and enter, select the object, enter, select this as my first point of the mirror line, bring it straight down, 
And I guess I can pick this point here. And in this instance, yes, I do want to erase the source object. So I click yes. This is one of the few times that I use yes. Now it's time for me to drop in the sliding door over here. If I go back to my example, I'd like to place the sliding door, but before I do that, I'd like to go ahead and drop in the closet over here. Same as I did before, I need to offset some lines to accomplish this. I'll zoom in here. I will offset, I'll type O and enter. A distance of two feet is correct, so I enter. I take this line, offset it two feet, and then I pick this line. And instead of offsetting it two feet, I'm gonna offset it five inches. So I type five and enter. And then I enter again to terminate the command. And I know that it's going to be the same four foot bifold doors. So let me go ahead and draw a line. So I type L, enter from this midpoint to this midpoint and enter. And then O for offset, enter. The distance is half of four feet, which is two feet. So I type two feet, enter, offset the line up, offset the line down. Right click and enter, pick this line, and then delete it because I don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, and then I'm going to type TR and enter to trim. And I'm going to use a fence to trim the two lines here, and then pick this one and pick that one, and then enter. And now I can go ahead and drop in the bifold doors. If I can, if I still have my blocks open, I can go back there, click on door bifold, click it and bring it in. I can also come over here to insert and I can click on the insert dropdown. I have them listed here already. That might be quicker. So I can click here and bring them in and simply just place them there. Or, or, since I already had them in my drawing, I simply could have copied them over from this location down here. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. Whatever is best for you, whichever way you can be most effective and efficient is going to be fine. So what I'm going to do is go back to the Home tab so I can see my layers. I will select the block, place it on the right layer, and then I'm going to simply use the grips to take it from this point place it at this endpoint, select the grip again, right click and rotate and take it straight up like this and click and then tap the escape key. And I'll close this window. Time to put in the other doors, but I'll tell you what, I already have this door in here. So I might as well use that one even though, even though I have this door here. I'll go ahead and simply make a copy of it. And I want to place it at least three inches away from my wall here. So I'm going to type O and enter, type three and enter, pick this line, take it up. Enter, and then here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take that line and actually stretch it across like this. Tap the escape key. And then I need to know how far to offset. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to type in O for offset and enter. And I'd like that distance to be the same distance as this endpoint here to this endpoint. By simply picking those two points, I've established or I will be establishing the distance that I want. So I'm going to click and then I simply pick the line, move my cursor in this direction up, 
and I click and I have the distance that's needed. And then I will right click and enter to terminate that command. And now what I'm going to do is a bit of trimming. But let me show you what I can do with the trim command that I haven't done before. I'm going to type in TR and enter. Before I have been picking every line, I've shown you how I can pick the lines individually. I've also shown you how I can click one time in an empty space and then use a fence point like this. But here's something else you can do. Instead of just clicking one time, you can click and drag and do this with the fence and create a unique shape. And now I release the mouse button and I'm able to trim all of those segments at once. Once again, instead of clicking once and moving the cursor, just click and drag down and then release the mouse. And then I'll come over here and I'll do that one more time. I'm going to click right here and I'll do this. Click and drag and then release. And then right click and enter. I look at the drawing, everything looks good. I can now take this door and make a copy of it. So I'll type C O enter, select the object, enter. And I'm just going to take it, I'm going to copy it from here to the left and then over here to the right because I wanted to get two copies. So now I tap the escape key and now it's just a matter of taking the door and putting it in position. This door is already facing the correct orientation. So I'm going to pick the grip point here, right click it and rotate it up like this and then use that grip point again, turn ortho off and move it into place. Tap the escape key, come over here. And this time, instead of using the grips, I'll go ahead and use the commands. I need to type RO enter, select the object, enter. I'll use this as a base point, rotate, turn ortho on. I have it going in the right direction. Now I'm going to type M and enter, select the object, enter, and move it from this endpoint over to this one. But I need to flip the door, so I'm going to grip it and then just use this arrow key to flip in the other direction. Tap the escape key, and I'm all set there. I'd like to go ahead and put in the closet rod and shelf. If I look at my example, it's two lines. One of them is dashed or hidden, and then the other one is a solid line. So the dashed or hidden one represents the rod, and then the line represents the shelf. So I'm going to come over here. And the rod is usually right down the middle. So let me go ahead and just draw a line down the middle. So I'll type L, enter from here, the midpoint down to this midpoint, and then enter. It's not in the correct layer, and that's okay. So I'll go back to my home tab. I'll select it, and then I'll go ahead and place it on the right layer like that, and then tap the escape key. And then I'll offset. I'll type O, enter. And I believe the distance is going to be two inches. So I'm going to type two and enter. And I'll offset this line over to the left, which is closest to the doors, and click. And then enter to terminate the command. And now I need to take this line and turn it into either a dashed or hidden line. Let me tap the escape key and see what I have in my properties panel in my line type. If I click on the drop down, I don't have a dashed or hidden line loaded. So I'm going to click on other. And from the line type manager window, I'm going to click load. From here, I'm going to go down the list. And I'm going to select hidden. 
So I'm going to click on that and then click OK. And now I can click OK. And that line type is now part of my drawing file. And what I'd like to do now is take this line, I select it, I grip it, and change the properties so that the line type for this object is hidden. All done. And if I zoom in real close, I can see that it is set to hidden. But the scale is not right. I'm going to right click it and open up my properties window. So the properties window open on the side. I've already had it docked there before, so it went back there. So I'm going to hover over it and I can see that it is on the correct layer. The line type is set to hidden, but it's the line type scale that I need to change. And I usually default and I go with a value of 12 and I enter. That seems to be okay. You're more than welcome to change that to your liking. If you have another preference, that's okay. You can try a different line type scale, maybe 24, which is double of 12, maybe six, which is half of 12 or any other value. That's how you set that to hidden. And I'll go ahead and tap the escape key, remove the grips, bring it back over here. And why not give this a try with that mirror command one more time. I'm going to use that midpoint between two points. I'll type MI enter. I select the two objects with an implied crossing window like this. I enter, shift right click, select midpoint between two points. And I pick this endpoint and this endpoint. And I bring my line straight down and I click. Erase source objects, no. I'm going to zoom out. And I'd like to have the same two lines from this closet over in the other closet. So I come over here, I type CO enter, implied crossing window selects both lines, I enter. I pick this endpoint, turn off ortho, zoom it out, bring it over, pan and then click here, tap the escape key. And now it's just a matter of trimming. So I type TR enter and I can trim right through here like that. And I guess I could trim this as well here and enter. And that brings me to my sliding door now. So I'd like to place the six foot wide sliding door. Feel free to place it wherever you'd like. Perhaps maybe you'd like to align it so that it is in line with this door. That's entirely up to you. I'll give that a shot right now. So I'm going to draw a line. I'll type L, enter. And I will hover over this point. I still have O track on, and I'll bring that straight up. It finds that intersection, so I click on it. And I want to take it straight up, not to the midpoint, but I'll use the midpoint to track from here over. And I don't have ortho on, that's my problem. So let me turn ortho on, I'll give this a shot. Pick that midpoint again, bring it over, and now it's tracking and now I can click. Tap the escape key, and then offset, O, enter, a distance of six feet. So I type six feet, enter, from here, over here and enter. And now I can bring in that sliding door. Is that sliding door over here under insert? Not quite. So I'll go back to the blocks from libraries. There's the sliding door. I'll give it one click and bring it in here like this. It's on the wrong layer. So I will go ahead make my home tab active, select the block, and then select the right layer. Tap the escape key, bring it over here, and then place that sliding door in the middle of the wall. So I will type M, enter, select my object, enter. From this endpoint, 
and I'll line it up to that midpoint there. But I need to put in my frame. And that's going to be a two inch frame on either side, just like I have a two inch frame on my door here. So let me draw that. So I'm going to type O and enter, type two and enter, offset this line over to the right, offset this line to the left and enter. But I'm not done because this isn't the proper representation. Let me just close this window, bring this over and fix this. So first of all, I don't want the wall going all the way through. So I'm going to type TR enter and I'll trim this and this. And then I'm also going to trim it here and here and enter. Now I'm going to change my layer and make it the A plan layer. I'll type L enter. I'll draw a line from here to there. Enter, enter again to draw another line, enter to terminate the command, and then enter again to draw the line here and draw the line here. And then I'd like this line to be on the same layer as the other lines. So I'm going to come up here to match properties. I'm going to select this line as my source. And this is my destination. Notice how it goes to the proper layer. This one does also. And then I enter. And now I'm realizing that, you know, there should be a line going all the way through. So perhaps I should not have drawn the two individual lines. I should have just drawn one. I'm glad I made this mistake. And we'll just call it a mistake because I can fix it. And I'll type J and enter to join. And I'll join this line and this one and enter. And I'll do the same with the two lines below. I'll simply enter to repeat the previous command. I'll select my two line segments here and enter. And I have what I need. Going back to my example, pretty much there. I just need to drop in perhaps one more door, a window, and the kitchen fixtures.